if you want to start it from the keypad or from a remote switch somewhere, you're with the source of your speed limit. Those are the basic parameters. The next set is I.O. assignment. The drive has nine digital inputs. It has six digital outputs. And, you meet, and a couple of those digital outputs are relay and contact outputs. So you have some possibilities here of coordinating things like doing some switching on the fly, some interlocks. You can uh, use a contact to say that it drives at speed. You could use another one in case the drive, if the drive trips out on a fault, you need to send that information out. You have that capability. So you have the parameters that will do the assignment of that. Uh, important, of course, is the motor that you're going to couple the drive to. So we have a family of parameters that allow you to uh, talk about the motor. Usually the most the, the thing that you most need to know, and probably the only major thing, is the current. But there are some applications where the uh, not in not in any HVAC or fan control, where a few more things about the motor, like the number of poles, the base speed, that becomes important. It's pretty much a given with uh, the fan and uh, <clears throat> the fan and pump market. So the motor the motor amp full load amps is a big thing because. That sets up the protection in the drive. The drive does have internal UL approved overload protection. So when you put in the motor lamps, you're like setting your overload. It is the same thing as setting your overload uh, protection. Application related parameters would be things like uh, the PID loop. So when you're trying to control to, uh, to the pressure, you're applying a PID loop in the drive and it can be set up to respond to fluctuations in pressure response. Or if you've got a pump and you're looking at uh, not pressure, maybe flow or maybe temperature or something and by use of a fan or, or heating and cooling, then you can do that directly on the drive without having to have an external controller to uh, <coughs> precondition the signal for you. And that's the application related parameters. Do you do anything, I, I heard you talking before about needing a BACnet cable. You do Modbus and you work with BACnet and you do Long all Long BACnet and Modbus. Okay. This drive actually has a standard RS-485 out of Modbus, is standard out of that. We have developed cards for previous, for other drives that will work equally here. We have one that does RS-485, RT Modbus, the back net or by selection Johnson Nemesis on the same card. Well, this I <laughs> know that's getting out of date, but we do have we do have back net capabilities on this drive. And uh, it is a like I said, I keep going back to its immediate predecessor. We have some other, I'm the, sorry. Back to your RS40. So it's Modbus standard in the drive? Yes. So we'd be better off with Modbus. Card in the okay, okay. Well, I have in my box, you just need to bring it out. Yeah, the signal is already in the car, it's already in there. Okay, yeah. But there are, I mean, I know that BACnet is being adopted by like some schools and a lot of municipalities. I've read long, both, yeah. Okay, so we, we can make that transition. Um, the inputs and outputs that you want to bring into the same into the drive. So let's say you're bringing in your on command and you're bringing in your analog inputs. This terminal is a, uh, it's like, it's pretty oversized with the screws. It, you can put like you probably put a number 16 wire on the terminals there, and plus <coughs> you can actually. Disconnect, you can take the I.O. terminal block off the drive if you want to wire it outside the drive. So if you've got it mounted on a wall, you don't have to be on your knees looking up. You can actually remove it, put in the wires you need, and then remount it. So we have that capability. Also, for a lot of the conditions, like if you have a condition that's a fault, that's an emergency, an external stop, or switching from one ramp rate to another, or switching from preset speeds, you can do that on the inputs, but also if you happen to have a signal that is a normally closed signal, in other words, it deactivates when you want the uh, unit to actually respond to it, you can configure the drive so that it's looking for a normally closed state on the input as far as normal, instead of normally open. So there's a lot of flexibility on that. 
we have <clears throat> the analog output sending out the signals of like the, the, uh, the output speed or the output amp, out, amps to something else. We have two channels and each one of them by, the, by a switch on the board. Can, you can send it out either as 0 to 10 or as 4 to 20. So they have your choice there. So I think a lot of people would need like 4 to 20 <coughs> milliamps for process signals. Correct? <coughs> or you, you find a mixture? Yeah, it goes either way. Okay, well, we can do it either way. We we'll use a lot of 0 to 10. Okay. And if you do 2 to 10 with the 4 to 20 with a 500 ohm problem. Yeah, and I think there's typically, if it's like you go 0 to 10, 4 to 20, but then there's a parameter on board that would say, do you want 0 to 20 or 4 to 20, which by, by extension could be 0 to 10 or 2 to 10 on both. So. Um, we came out with this line and just a couple of reasons we did, just to say from a TECO standpoint, why we're coming out of this line is because we did see, so we were missing out on some applications at the higher end. And the drive we had before was very good and it could do a lot of things, but occasionally we had to know, say no to certain things. Ah, I can't quite do that, it's not quite there. This product, we will say, we can't, much less often are we gonna say the word no to an application. So that's one reason we brought it out as our Tico. One of the, um, but a couple of other things are, this is a new design and the hardware and the stuff built in quality control line turn out has a 10 year design life. So two or three years down the road, your customers aren't gonna call, hey, this component has dropped out and we need to replace it. These things are built to last. So we, we see that as a plus in the marketplace and that'll give people like a, a working experience within this. Hey, yeah, I've got a couple of these over here. They work great. Let's buy some more and put them over here. That's the type of thing that uh, we expect to get on that, but we're, we're striving for here. So what do you do for your warranties then? Do you have a three-year warranty on your stuff? Or? Yes, we do. Um, 36 months from data, from data manufacture as a standalone unit, when you buy a motor, a match motor, it becomes 36 months from date of sale. And some of, our, some of the motors we have are actually five-year warranty out of the out of standard, and we will monitor that on the drive for those packages. We'll monitor five years of that. And put five years on the drive too then? Yes, when okay. we sell with the motor. That is correct. Does the factory have to come start them up? Or no? No, it's the same warranty if we start it. Yeah, yeah, I'd say warranty if you start it as long as I mean, you're not, your hands aren't wet or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah. uh, or you didn't have a magnet. And or you dropped a wrench down to the bottom and didn't realize and powered it up or, or left it out in the rain before you installed it. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much. I maybe. noticed he doesn't say anything about the shavings from where you drilled up the, the holes in the cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, if you, if you in fact have a customer who is looking for somebody from the factory Start. We do have around the company. We have we have authorized service people to do send somebody from the factory, depending upon the application and the needs. But some of the things we did, uh, the PID function I mentioned before. Do you ever see the situation where you got a PID and the conditions say you don't really need any action out of the motor, and so it's crawling along at a real slow speed and not doing much of anything. We have the option in that case to say, instead of turning the motor, just put it to sleep, let it just go to rest. And then meanwhile in the background, they're looking at things and eventually a pressure or demand flow is gonna change and all of a sudden it's gonna be called to do some actual work and then it'll wake up. So we can put that capability in on the drive. So that's energy savings. It's probably better for the motor not to try to run at some real low speed too. Do you do a, a thing at low speeds with calculating motor over temp as an alarm? Mm. I know I've run into several drives before that if they try to run the drive too slow, it'll calculate, generate uh, an alarm called a motor over temp. I don't think I've seen it that way, but depending upon the type of motor, this does have a PTC uh, input. So you can actually, if you've got that thermal,